a 665 square metre block of land in a riverside suburb close to the city. Here in Perth, and in anyone's language really, this is prime real estate. Well, it would be for most people if it wasn't for a few other important defining attributes of this battle axe block. For example, there's an eight metre fall from front to back, and there's also two natural springs that bubble up through it. Andrew and Erica Boyne aren't most people. Where four previous owners were unable to find a way to make a home design work on this challenging parcel of land, this determined couple have triumphed. Not by conquering the site, but by working with it to build a beautiful, low-impact family home that has enabled them to devote 80% of the land to garden, filled with native species. Andrew, what an achievement. As an architect, was designing and building your own home on this difficult block a puzzle that you had to solve? Yes, it was, and um, the site uh, it was really an interesting one. It had a lot of water um, and it had a really kind of steep gradient. Great architecture or design comes from challenges, and this site is unusual in Perth because it's not flat and sandy. Um, so it, ha it offered challenges and we were able to develop sort of solutions to that. Fresh water coming out of the ground on Perth's Swan Coastal Plain in a summer dry climate, a blessing or a curse? Oh, an absolute blessing. It made the site um, difficult for other people to deal with and that allowed us to sort of take advantage of it. Um, but in terms of gardening, it's been fantastic because we can able to irrigate the whole thing all year um, without any sort of scheme water. So the site has an eight metre fall on it and so we needed to level out a few of the um, areas. So we, there are three terraces on the site and we tried to balance the fill levels so that we weren't importing a lot of sand. Um, so there's, yeah, three terraces through the property. And the other, other advantage with that is that it also um, allows different planting conditions. The edges of the terraces were raised uh, to um, bring the more arid type species like verticordias and things, bring them out of the water table. How about drainage? Well, drainage is a real problem because the water level is so high. Um, we have soak wells uh, or drains around the property that help dry it out, but also the, the level changes of lifting up certain areas help to dry out those, those zones. And we, have, we sort of protect the house with the main drainage system. And what do you do with all the storm water? For example, I see there's no gutters on the roof, so when the rain comes off that and hits the ground, where does it go? Um, well, all the rain is collected through soak wells and then we push it all through the main um, uh, creek system that runs through the property. I see you've reduced the amount of paving on the site. How does that help with stormwater management? Well, in a battle axe property, you've got a large bit of area there that would be used as a driveway typically, but we didn't feel that was a useful use of that space, it caused drainage problems. Um, so we keep the cars at the top of the block and then we have a garden that moves down and it provides a really nice entry feature. How do the springs relate to the water feature? Well, the springs are collected halfway up the property and then they're collected in soak wells and then piped down to the water feature. And from there they uh, flow out over a little waterfall and then down through a creek which runs through the property and then eventually it runs into the wetland. What inspired your plant choices? Well, we wanted the house to really feel like it was part of Western Australia and sit in a West Australian garden. So we've tried to create three different gardens with specific species selections. So we have a Gascoigne Geraldton region, um, a South Coast Esperancy region, and then another area for the um, Perth Swan Plain. And why those particular regions? Well, they're um, important little bioregions for Western Australia, so there's some really interesting plants that come from there. But it also gave us an opportunity to connect to holidays and travels that we've had um, around the state. But I think we've got uh, at least 200 um, West Australian species. Any favourites? 
Well, definitely the um, Verticoria grandis or the Scarlet Feather Flower. Um, that sits pride and place in the house and is visible from the main living space. And that sits up in its tube, so it's well drained. We've got a whole bunch of banksias. Um, they will grow and become sort of um, flowers for birds. And then the third one would be the carry tree, which um, I grew for my father. We told him it would be, he doesn't really like trees that much, and we told him it was a shrub. Um, and then I heard him say, and I gave him the Latin name, and I heard him say, what am I, carry tree, what am I gonna do with this? And it's, um, it's three years old and is about 10 metres tall now, so it's obviously going really well in the bottom of the garden. With all of this water and these lovely layered native plantings, have you seen much wildlife come into the garden? Yeah, we've seen a lot of new birds um, come in. Uh, we, fortunately, we've got a lot of, lots of established trees around in neighbours' properties, so we see cockatoos and things. And then we've had um, a lot of frogs come into the site, so you can hear some now. Um, there are four species of frogs that live in the, uh, on the garden. So we're still pointing out the stuff. So as an architect, do you feel you've achieved what you set out to do with the design? I, th I think so. Eric and I had lived in the United States for a while and we always had trouble reconnecting back to Perth because we'd always thought we would go back. And this house and this garden was about really um, joining us or connecting us to place. It has a garden that we can see from the inside, like the blends in and out. Um, and we really feel connected to the animals and birds and plants. And that was really what we were trying to achieve and I think it's been really successful um, and we really love living here.